Now, when it comes to your home electrical system, the most common thing that's gonna be a source of danger, specifically overheating and possibly a source for fires, is not a space heater, which although does draw a very high current load for a long period of time, especially in an application like this, I'm in my basement, maybe the basement's a little cool, you want a little space heater to warm up your area. You see this a lot in office environments. That's common, but the space heater has been designed to carry that load and the space heater's cord is also designed to carry that load. So when used correctly, that should not be an issue, even though it will have quite the demand when it comes to current. On the other end, I have kind of a designer outlet installed. This is an outlet I couldn't really believe existed and it cost almost $200 for everything you need for one little outlet. Uh, my installation looks terrible, but I just wanted to try it out. Now that is also not necessarily gonna be your source of failure because again, it can hold up to the current demands that we're putting on it right now. It's actually the thing in the middle here, the extension cord. Specifically, this is an extension cord that you'll find pretty much at any home improvement store and it's only made out of 16 gauge wire. Now 16 gauge wire is only rated for 13 amps, but it easily can be plugged into a 20 amp circuit so you can go well over that 13 amps, which can cause some issues. And believe it or not, there are some specialty holiday cords like this, which are actually only 18 gauge, it has a ton of different outlets on it. So you can plug all sorts of different things in, but it's actually not as dangerous. Even though the wire gauge is smaller at 18 gauge, this 16 gauge is a source of more problems than specialty cords like this, and I'll show you why. Now I did a poll online and over 3,000 people already voted, and I asked them, are you paying attention to wire gauge when you pick your extension cord? Now surprisingly, at least to me, 75% said yes, and then 25% said no, or what is wire gauge? Now I will say my audience is pretty darn versed on home electrical. Some of them are professionals. Some of them are just interested homeowners that do DIY projects around their house and electrical is part of that. So I would say if the everyday home repairs audience is at 25% not paying attention, it's easily 50% when looking at all homeowners and also especially renters. So this absolutely is a common problem that's good to get educated on. So we talked about the 18 gauge kind of specialty cord. Let's do a little test here. I'm gonna power it from an EcoFlow Delta Pro so we know exactly how much power we're pushing. And then I'm going to use a 1500 watt space heater to create that load, which would be well over the rated capacity for this 18 gauge specialty extension cord. This cord says it's only rated for 625 watts, but why I'm saying this isn't a problem child, we'll soon find out. So let's go ahead and turn things on. And I got the fan to actually turn, but really nothing else. So why is that? Well, when you look at these cords and look at the plugs, usually they actually have some built-in protection. So take a look at the plug. It says right there, five amps max, but you can see it actually has a fuse. So that is why, even though this thing's 18 gauge, it's safer than the 16 gauge we're gonna test in a second. We have an extra fuse, obviously looks good, but then we look at our fuse that was on the hot side of this plug, and when we try to introduce that 1500 watt load, we obviously went ahead and burnt out this fuse. So with that built-in protection, this cord cannot go past its overall design capacity. When you go out to pretty much any home improvement store, you'll see these packages, and they usually do have a common color combination and it'll say light duty or for instance on this one medium duty now light duty usually references 16 gauge wire medium duty is going to be 14 gauge wire and then heavy duty as expected would be 12 gauge wire now we'll also talk about another factor you want to take into account but right now let's go ahead and test the 16 gauge extension cord now the 16 gauge extension cord is quote unquote light duty and has a capacity of 1625 watts or 13 amps but honestly you can plug this into a 20 amp circuit and there's nothing really to stop you from pulling a full load through that circuit. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So let's go ahead and put a heavy load on this cord and show you the problem. We'll use this cool thermal imaging camera that goes right into the end of your iPhone and gives you a good perspective on where the areas of concern can be and just how hot these cords can get from pulling normal loads in your house, but just using them in an inappropriate application.
So for this task, I'm gonna go ahead and start up two different space heaters. I'm gonna turn them on in a combination of low and high settings, and that's just to get the combination of power output I want, which is right at about 2,500 watts, which is around 21 amps on a 120 volt circuit. Then after five minutes, I use the FLIR thermal imaging camera. You can see our maximum temperature that we're reading out is about 130 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Now what should be noted is when we bundle extension cords like this, where you have multiple different strands of the extension cord stacked on top of each other, that can be a concentration of heat and generate even more heat because you're bundling that. Even worse, if you had a pillow, blanket, or something covering this, that can also make it heat up because then it's gonna insulate it and it's gonna reduce the amount of heat rejection that the cord gets to its environment. And then continuing on with our intervals here at 15 minutes, you can see we reached the high 160s up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit for our hot spots. At this point, the cord is definitely hot to the touch. You are not gonna be hanging onto the cord. And you start to question, what would this do for the life of the cord? If you actually ran this cord in this scenario, it got this hot, what's that gonna to do to the insulation layer? What's that gonna to do to the durability of the cord? And is it gonna be prone to early failures where the insulation might start to break down over time, leading to more and more issues with that cord where we might have a safety issue. Now I did run a couple more intervals at 20 and 25 minutes, taking the thermal images but you can see in this graph right here we reached a steady state now that was kind of equilibrium point where the heat created from the high load from the two different space heaters equal the amount of heat rejection we are getting to our overall environment here. But knowing just in this scenario, nothing insulating it, a brand new cord, we're already reaching 170. This goes to show why you'd never want to use 16 gauge extension cords for any sort of heavy load applications. Now my recommendations to you as a homeowner, usually we want things that are versatile, right? We don't want an extension cord for this application and an extension cord for that application. And then another one when we get the heavy loads. So if you're just gonna go with the general purpose extension cord, at least go with the 14 gauge. And you can probably make an argument if you're getting a long extension cord, let's say 75 feet or 100 feet, you should just go with the 12 gauge because the longer the extension cord gets, the heavier gauge of wire that you want so you don't get as much power loss throughout the length of the cord. Now let me know down in the comments what you think. Have you guys seen your own issues with extension cords and what's your preferred gauge of wire for extension cords? Now you might have seen behind me, this is the way that I actually wind up my extension cords. It might look like a confusing mess, but this way I can throw it in the truck and it actually doesn't get tangled. If you want to actually see how to wrap your extension cords and a little bit more about the why, check out this video right here and I'll run you through the full process. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.